Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. And just feeling like the shift this morning, I was interviewed on a national radio show and here I am interviewing somebody else. And one of the questions that I was asked is, you know, 12 years doing this, why? And it's a good reflective thought because the why is I have grown so much from doing the show have been so fortunate, the people who have said yes to be guests and come here with the issues that they had to get where they are today and be so transparent, as well as the gifts that they came to share with us, that they are so willing to risk pulling back the curtain and saying, here, this is the message I came to deliver. This is what I had to go through to deliver it to you. And I love that because I learned so much from people about what's possible and how big we can go and how transformational we can be. So, so speaking of ability, I'm about to unleash unto the world the revamped program that I've done, which today is going to be called the Ultimate Visibility Program. It's opening this week. I'm so excited by who's in the class. If you want to know how to be interviewed on radio and podcast, and book yourself on shows within 60 days, even if you don't have a list of the podcast shows or have any prior publicity knowledge, I'm gonna get you there in six weeks. You can go to debbied.net slash visibility. It's D-E-B-B-I D dot net slash visibility and learn more there. And uh, the thought for today is really about changing our personal reality. It's, uh, it's really where I'm sitting right now because Starting place for transforming reality is us, right? It's not an impersonal experience. It's not a concept. It is personal, actually. How we see it, how we relate to it, it's a product of our unique history, of our attitudes, of our beliefs, because we are unique. How we see the world and the reality we choose to experience. So the core of our awareness really is the source of our beliefs, our feelings, our attitudes, and that's the place from which we can go forth and change our personal reality. Inner awareness, that's the ever-present field of possibilities. So we always have possibility. We always have choice. What are you gonna choose at any moment? What are you gonna choose right now? Gratitude, gratitude is a practice that brings us grace. Mm. Gratitude empowers us choices to see the opportunities that are actually here already. However, it gives us fresh eyes. Remember, your personal reality begins within you. My thankful heart will find in every moment some heavenly blessings, is a quote from Henry Ward Beecher. Today, I have the great honor to have Daniel Gutierrez here. It's actually his second time on the show, but it's been forever. So this is gonna be a major catch up, even though he and I know each other outside of the show. But for you guys, a catch up on all he's become and is doing today and what he's been through. He's a very sought after motivational speaker. He was featured in the documentary Luminous World Views as one of the world renowned thought leaders. He's appeared at Carnegie Hall in New York City to a sold out crowd. Best selling author, recently released his fifth book, Radical Mindfulness. And this is a man who has stepped into leading people on spiritual retreats to Machu Picchu, the Amazon, the top of the Himalayas, and he guides entrepreneurs and corporate executives in deep dive mindfulness immersions. You can find out more about one of these top 100 Hispanic in America, gentlemen, Daniel Gutierrez, <laughs> at his website, danielgutierrez.com. Daniel, welcome back to Dare to Dream. So excited to be back. It's been a while, right? A few years? Yes, sir. It had been on air for 12, so I'm assuming it's probably been seven or eight years. At least a year. Yeah. Wow. So I'm not going to dare to ask you to recap the eight years, but I know, <laughs> right? That would be cray cray. In yeah. the conversation, this is so going to come out where you are. You know what? Honestly, even the way you're dressed right now, because you would have come once a on a time in the corporate attire. The but suit, were, time, the whole thing, yeah. You are being you right now. Yeah. So 
let's start there. Like, what is the discovery that you made that took you from where you were operating, which was fine for the time, sure. but took you through a journey to have more willingness to show yourself to the world, to be yourself out in the world? Yeah, well, you know, um, one of those moments where I, where I had this kind of this, well, for lack of better terms, like an awakening, like, like I was, I was in a restaurant, a, a posh membership only restaurant in New York city on, in Manhattan on fifth Avenue. And uh, I remember sitting there in this big leather chair and my custom made suit and Al Sharpton's to the left of me and a football player to the right of me. I'm thinking I am the shit, right? I'm just like, I, I have arrived people. You know, and I'm sitting there looking out the window and it's snowing these big, like toilet paper sized snowflakes. I mean, it was the sexiest thing I've ever experienced. And then in, 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 a, in a second, like I hear this voice and it says, who are you? And what values did you sell to be who you are today? And it was like, what? I can't even enjoy my $200, $250 shot of cognac without some voice in my head going, who are you? And it really shocked me, Debbie. It shocked me because for all practical purposes, where I was at was successful. Or the fact that I was in that restaurant and a private, you know, private restaurant, at the time, I was president of a huge organization in New York City. I was uh, an advisor to the Department of White House personnel. My speaking career was doing absolutely wonderful. Had no reason to have a question like that pop up. But the truth is, as I look back, I was miserable. I was miserable. Yeah, I mean, flying to New York. I mean, people think that flying to New York from L.A. is sexy. I would, I would take an overnight flight, get to, uh, get to New York at 6 in the morning, and I would start my meetings at 8 o'clock in the morning. They would go all the way to midnight. And sometimes because I was just, I thought it was crazy to get a hotel room for three hours before I took my flight home, I would go sleep at the airport at JFK on the bench. <laughs> right? And so, I, you know, I, I really was going, wow. So now what do I do? I get this question in my head. And, and, and so if, to go back a little bit, because some people probably don't know me, at the age of 17, I was a licensed Baptist minister. And so that's where that came from, because the question was, what happened to Danny Boy? What happened to that kid back then, right? What, 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 what happened to that? You know, and it wasn't that where I was at wasn't, like you said, it wasn't that wasn't successful. It's just that it was like, what did I have to do to get there? And you know what? I don't care who you are in this country or, or any country. If you're in leadership and top leadership, sometimes you got to look the other way to keep your position. Sometimes you have to do things you don't like doing. And I did that. And I would look just like, mm, I ain't seen nothing. So tell me, when you say sometimes you have to do things you don't like doing, compelling, what did you have to do that well, you don't I, like? I think the way people were treated, the way people were discarded, the way that people were stepped on, you know, uh, careers that were ruined just to get ahead, it was ridiculous. And I'm just being straight up honest. I mean, we do that. I did that, you know, and I, and, and I would make, I would say, well, you know what, to my lawyers, take them down. If that's what he wants to play, then take him out. Then go for it. Well, I don't mean like kill him. I mean like take his career. <laughs> I know, also it's like, whoa, dude. No, and I don't mean that. I mean like it was brutal, it was mm. brutal. And, and you know what, that's the world we live in. That's, it's a dog eat dog world, right? You know, and, and, and I, I wasn't proud of that, but it was part of the game, that, you know, to be in that kind of power, to be in that kind of, uh, uh, that level of success where you're really calling shots and you're, you know, my constituents were PepsiCo, my constituents were big companies that were, that, that I was president of. So, you know, we were constantly playing God with people's careers. And that's the part I didn't like. I didn't like that at all because I, did, I didn't feel that way on the inside. And so in that moment when I'm all of a sudden getting this, get in this, who are you? I didn't know. So that, Debbie, led me on a quest to the Himalayans. That led me on the quest to the Amazon. That led me to a quest to the Andes, you know, to ask these indigenous people, what is life all about? Because they don't have anything, nothing. And yet they were happy. Mm -hmm. They had joy in their heart. And I wanted that joy. I wanted that joy. And so I, I went, I, I sought it out. I mean, you know, the way I'm dressed now, I mean, you would think, that I'm a monk, <laughs> but, but, you know, I even shaved my head. Remember I used to have hair, 
you know, I shaved my head in, in, in respect for the Buddhist monks, you know, mm. and, and, and I never shaved it back. You know, I never, never grew it back, but, but yeah. I, so what was the turning point for you? What was the pivot point? So the, these are very powerful questions that you're asked when you're in this posh place and it actually stops you from enjoying your cognac and all these celebs around you. And suddenly it's saying, Hey, take a, take a look, buddy, who have you become? Where are your values? And then there's this other voice reflecting back to the young teenage you who's a minister saying, what happened to Danny boy? Yeah. So you take this on as a quest and you go out in the world and you go to these indigenous places. And what was the moment where something got awakened in you? that allowed you to feel reconnected with your essence? Well, you know what? Question. And, and I struggled with giving the real answer. I struggled with giving the real answer, even in my book, because I left out, I left out a chapter because I was afraid to tell people the truth. What happened? What woke me up? What, what got me to see what was there? And, and so I'm going to share that because I think it's important. Uh, I was in uh, Peru in the mountains, in front of the Pachatusan Mountains in the Andes, and I was offered plant medicine. Well, coming from, I mean, being a guy with a stick up my ass, I'm just gonna say, I mean, just straight up, you know, I hate to put it that way, but I was like, what? I don't do drugs, I'm not doing this, you're crazy, you're out of your mind, I'm not, never gonna do that. And no, 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 no. And then I don't know what happened, but I guess it convinced me because eventually I said, okay, what, what, what have I got to lose? What have I got to lose? I'm in Peru. What happens in Peru stays in Peru, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, sure, sure. And Debbie, I, I couldn't even tell the story of my life from that moment, from that, that place being in the chair in that restaurant without being honest about my, my uh, opening, my awakening to the truth because it was plant medicine that opened my eyes. It was that veil that was removed, that, that like, like, like I was like, who am I? I? So I asked the question, who am I? Where have I been? Who have I been? And when have I been that? Show me the truth, I wanna know. And in that moment, in that experience, wow, for those eight or nine hours that I was, I was just being taught like the book of life was opened up to me and, and the lifetimes of being a, a, a medicine man and a heart teacher and, and the different indigenous groups, they showed, I saw it all. I saw it all. And, and they were like, you came into this lifetime with that. That's why you're troubled because you're not living your truth and you need to live your truth. If you really want to be happy and the money will follow, don't worry. Don't worry about that. Trust your wisdom was the message. Trust your wisdom. Hmm. You are a wise person, not because you're here, but because you've lived so much. What a tragedy if you don't live that. You have a wa what a waste if you don't Yeah, live. and what, what a tragedy if you also don't give that, right? And give if that, If you yeah. have that kind of knowledge within you, yes. wisdom. And that changed that, my life, Debbie. That, oh that my was gosh. The, that was the pivot point where I went. I remember coming out of this, whatever you want to call it, fog, and going, uh, now what? <laughs> mm, yeah, so what? Now what? now what? Exactly. Yeah, now what? Now I have this, now I know. It's not like I don't know. Sitting in that posh restaurant, I didn't know. Now I know. And I'm going, okay, then that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do. I'll come back. And so after many years of traveling and visiting indigenous cultures and, and studying and, and doing plant medicine and, and really under, learning to understand my gifts, you know, the, the, there was another pivot point, And that was when I got a call from my sister that said, you need to come home. Because there was a point where I did wake up from all this travel and go, oh my God, why did I do this? Why did I walk away from this, this career? Why did I walk away from my, my, my income? Why did I walk away from the White House? Why did I walk away from the presidency? What the hell were you thinking? That's what's going through my head. I'm in the Andes going, oh! <laughs> you know, right? I'm like, what did I do? And, and then I got the call from, from my sister that said, you need to come home. You need to come home. And, and everything, Debbie, made sense to me when I got a chance to be with my mother. She was, she was dying. And I remember flying to Dallas and I told my, my siblings who'd been taking care of her, go home. Let me spend time with her alone. I'll stay here tonight. And I'll take care of her. Go home and rest and let me be with her. And, and 
And I remember at two o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm sitting there looking at her and I can't sleep because I was afraid she'd die, all these machines on her and stuff. And I'm just like looking at her. And, and, and then I got the answer to that question, why? I, I, I was sitting there looking at her. And I remember what the monks taught me in the Himalayas. And I remember what the, what the, what the maestros taught me in the Amazon. And I remember what the Pacos and the Kiro were teaching me in the Andes. And they said, Daniel, be present. Be present to life. Be present, so present that nothing can enter your mind but the present moment. And, and know that. And all of a sudden, because I was sitting there looking at my mother going, what a horrible son. You weren't around. You never came to visit very often. Blah, blah. You know, all the humanistic stuff was coming up. And, you know, and then that little boy in me that was going, I'm losing my mom. I'd lost my father when I was five, so now I'm losing my mom. And I'm like, I, I'm, you know, poor me, poor me. Right. And then I'm looking at her and all of a sudden I remember all these lessons and I, and I got present, very, very present. And I'm looking at her and all of a sudden in my body, it was like, I could feel the pain of her struggle. I could feel her lungs failing in my own body. I could feel her liver failing in my own body. And before I knew it, I looked over at her and I went, I was like shocked because I was like, where did she go? All of a sudden it was just a light, just a light. That's all. And I was like, what? And then I looked at my hands and, and, and I wasn't there. It was just a light. I, we were both just two spirits. And I looked at her and she said to me, this is, this, is, this is the why. She said to me, many lifetimes before we entered into this human form, you made me a promise. You promised me when I needed you most, you would be here and you're here. I release you from your contract. Thank you. I was bawling. I was bawling. I was like, how can this, how can this be happening? What is all my life, Deb, from that moment where, where I was having that cognac, from being a minister, all my life was so that I could be present in that moment. All of the traveling, all of the understanding, the medicine, everything that I had done was so I could experience that moment in that time. And I knew why I had done what I had done. And I knew why I needed to be there for my mom at that moment so that she could say, that spirit could say, well done, well done, right? And that's where the word radical came from. And the book came from radical mindfulness because it takes, a, it takes the practice of mindfulness in that moment to really stay present enough to experience that. I, I could have been stuck in my ego or in, in all this other stuff and I wasn't. So all that, all that stuff, all that, whatever you want to call my life was about, was for that moment. Thank God I was present. Thank goodness I was able to experience that kind of, of, of connection with another spirit, with another human, you know? And so that's what, that, that's what life, that's what brings me today to, yeah. to the book. To, you know, it's like, oh, I had to tell the story. And Debbie, I had a deal with, with, with Ed Cartoli's agent. He signed me. The year before, two years before, he says, you're going to be like this next, you know, because you speak two languages and it's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I was writing a book called Dancing in the Chaos. And I had written, I had written this, this synopsis and, you know, the whole thing with books and agents and all that stuff. It's like a pain in the butt, but I was doing it. I came back from that, my mom's experience, and I fired him. I fired him. He was like blown away. He said, well, you, you, you're making a big mistake. I said, no. No, I'm writing this book for money and I can't write for money. I have to write for my heart and I'm going to write another book and it's not got nothing to do with you. It's, I have to tell a story about my mom and, and that's where Radical Mindfulness came from. That's how that book came out. You know, maybe someday I'll go back and say, hey, okay, I'll write that book now. But, but that, that, that's what changed my life, David. I and mean, that's changed my life. That changed who I was at my physiology, my phys everything about me changed because mm -hmm. I realized, okay, like, like, they were like the plant medicine was teaching me. Trust your wisdom. And, and like you said, and give it away. Give it away. Teach people. Teach mm -hmm. people that, that you can be powerful without being cruel. You can be powerful without ruining careers. You can be powerful without stepping on people. Try loving people, right? And I'm still, Deb, doing great things. I'm working with NBC right now. I mean, I'm still doing great. I've been on Carnegie Hall I mean, just, just, just last year. So the great things are still happening, but you know what? I get to do it from love. Totally. I get to do it from love. And that, that not own, I don't do it because I have to. I do it because it changes me. Yeah. It changes me to do that. And you've even been doing work with my brother. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about this. I sometimes, it's sometimes <laughs> so weird. 
like how you and I know each other and then right. <laughs> you become family with my family at this point. And so you've been doing work with my brother and his wife, my best friend, because they have something called Call, Live Calm with Cancer and they have meditations out there in the world, really powerful meditations for cancer patients and doctors and caretakers. Yeah. And you've been coming in and doing the Spanish version of yeah. some of those meditations, another way you're giving and gifting back to the world. How has that been going? Oh my gosh, I mean, your brother's so talented as a producer. I mean, I mean, what he did, we recently did a video. We, we changed our, our, our strategy just a little bit. And I said to him, if grandma's in the hospital, grandma doesn't understand English probably. And if the granddaughter's there with her, she doesn't understand Spanish. So let's do both. Let me do both. Mm -hmm. Let me speak English and Spanish at the same time. And then they both can enjoy it together. And so we started doing the bilingual version. It's not Spanglish, right? It's no, actually no. one version in Spanish, yes. one version I, in no, English. I, I, no, I, I literally would say, you know, cerra tus ojos, close your eyes. I mean, at the same time, I'm speaking both languages so that both can enjoy it. So that the young generation can be with grandma and grandma can get the benefit of the, of the meditation. Mm -hmm. And so, so your brother, uh, I played the Indian flute and he was like, bring your flute. The first time I didn't bring it. He says, why didn't you bring your flute? I said, because I'm not doing that. So the second time I did bring it in the studio and wow, he's magical. And, I, and, and there's this one video where I, I literally, I didn't know because I don't know production, right? I go in there and I go, how do I play the flute and do this and go out at the same time? I don't understand. I, I can't hold all these instruments at the same time. It's like, <laughs> you don't do that. I go, how do you do that? He goes, well, just put the headphones on, do one track at a time. I said, oh, so we got this beautiful piece that of me uh, speaking, playing the tambourine that's everything it's so beautiful and and i i was in tears when i when he sent it to me because i was like david what a gift what a gift to be able to use all my talents at one time and to give that way and i'm so happy to give that way and for him to be able to take it and make it magic you know and 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 have you know that's what the that's what the medicine was telling me you know trust your wisdom but, Trust your gifts, like we all have them. Let your string out on your kite a little bit and trust that all those talents are there for a reason. And David was able to bring them all out at one time. And it was beautiful. I don't know if you've seen the video, it's amazing. It's an amazing piece, you know? I can't wait. Oh my goodness. Thank you for sharing that. And, uh, and I think it's phenomenal to hear this piece because what I know is when you're called, euphemistically, you, I, when we're called, right, that we don't know what places of discomfort we're going to be asked right. to find. Right. And right. often it's things we've been doing throughout our lives and didn't think we were going to revisit. It's happened to me where I've been asked out of nowhere, somebody's found out, I say I used to be a singer because I was a professional singer until... Right. 11 years ago and made other media choices when people only people from my past know me as such when people right now find out really you're a professional singer you read cds you're in front of bands and you traveled the world yes and they'll say sing which for someone who has not used that muscle for 11 years is kind of like <laughs> but i'm being called and i understand it's an opportunity and i just have to get out of the way and let it flow right and I love the fact that you're just following the next yes, following the energy, yes. Uh, yes. allowing the opportunity, and the shift is happening. Yes, and then people show up, like, like, like your brother that just says, hey, you want to come in studio, you know, uh, and, and they invite me to their home, and we have a great time together, and, and then we go down in this little place downstairs, and he's got this magical room that he, he creates magic. And, and even more touching than, than the product is the people that get to benefit from that. You know, the, the loving meditations, that's what it's called, loving meditations. You know, it's, 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 it's beautiful. And I don't know, maybe I would have done that before. I don't, I don't, I don't think I would have had time. Not that I didn't have time. I wouldn't have considered making time to serve that way. And I, and, I, and I gladly do it, I gladly do it, because that's what we're supposed to do, like your voice, you know, we, I had no idea he was gonna ask me to do that, and I was very shy, because I was like, I've never been recorded before, 
right? <laughs> and now I'm like, wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that I get to do that. And if people get to benefit from that. Cool. So loving meditations, folks. David Dashinger, same last name, D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. Tamara Green, his wife, and Daniel Gutierrez. Uh, check it out for sure. Well, when we come back, we're going to be talking about sacred journeys and finding <laughs> out all about the healing ventures that are possible. You're listening to Dare to Dream Radio and Podcast. First, I want to thank so much the sponsor of this show, Dr. Dane Heer, H-E-E-R, and Access Consciousness. They've been constant friends for lo this past decade in supporting the show. And if you're ready for your own kind of energetic healing, they have amazing classes and products anywhere in the world. It's drdaneheer.com and accessconsciousness.com. And if you're loving this show, I would ask you kindly and with gratitude in advance to please go to patreon.com slash dare to dream because you can donate to the show you can become part of the dare to dream team and podcast you have a big purpose to fulfill and this is why i interview successful leaders who have created major goals and the question for you is what would you do if you knew you could not fail what would it take for you to be completely free and bold in your life because at patreon.com slash dare to dream you can support the show and it will always be free to you always and this is not a but and for the show to flourish and be sustainable best quality transformational guests for one dollar on up you can make a difference for dare to dream because we are the number one transformation conversation available today and if you're just tuning in, this is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream, and I'm interviewing Daniel Gutierrez. You can go to his name. That's his website, danielgutierrez.com. So, oh, well, that, that was clearly the universe going, <laughs> hell yes, it's okay. I have a puppy here, too. It happened. So, sacred journeys. Uh -huh. You are on your, your own personal sacred journey. How did this become a venture? that you started sharing out in the world and offering to people to come with you on? It was, it was, in the beginning, it was kind of an accident, but honestly. I just said one day, I'm going to Peru, and anybody want to go? <laughs> I was joking. I was just joking on social media. Oh, I'm going to go to Peru. Anybody want to go? And all of a sudden, it was like, yeah, 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 yeah. But more importantly, I think it's important. Uh, uh, I'm going to Bhutan. In a couple of weeks, you know, I've been in Nepal. Um, just in a couple of months, I'll be opening up a center in Peru. Why Bhutan? How do you decide these places? <clears throat> they decide for me. <laughs> so the story behind Bhutan is that uh, I was a huge follower of Anthony Bourdain. And um, when he passed away, um, I was devastated. Me devastated. too. I, he was such a kind soul mm -hmm. I, I, and, and I understood his pain too. So it was, it was devastating to me. So I remember flipping through the channels and I, it said Anthony Bourdain's last show. And so I was like, Oh, I'm going to watch it. It was Bhutan. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching, I'm, I said, well, that's where the Eagle's nest is. The Eagle's nest is in Bhutan. I've always wanted to go to the Eagle's nest. It's a big monastery that hangs off the mountain. It's, it's always in movies. It's a beautiful place. And I'm watching his show, and as, as crazy as he is, I mean, I'm laughing because he was just like nuts. Uh, he was just him. That's why I loved him, because he was him. And, and, um, and I'm watching the show, and something says, you should go to Bhutan. You need to go do what he did. You need to go his same steps. And, see. and eat like hell while you go through Bhutan? Yeah, eat like hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he ate and drank like hell. But anyway, <laughs> so that was a thought. Not even a week later, Debbie, I get a call from a friend says, I have a friend that wants to meet you. He's a film producer. I said, you know, Debbie, we get all kinds of requests. And I'm like, mm, no, thank you. I appreciate it. And he kept at it. So finally, one day, just to shut him up, I said, fine, I'll talk to this guy. So I get him on Skype. Lo and behold, he says, do you want to go to Bhutan? <clears throat> I said, what? I said, oh, tell me about, what do you know about Bhutan? He says, well, I'm a friend of the prince. I ride bikes with him every year. 
And if you want to come, then I'll, I'll have them extend an invitation for you. So I said, well, yeah, I'd love to. And so I said, well, I'll just come by myself. He said, well, you know, the Bhutan is really looking for business people to come and, and to look at possible investments and, and stuff. I said, okay, I'll bring some people. So I have four people going with me and we're going to Bhutan. That's how that came about. It's like, it chose me. I didn't choose it. I mean, how, what are the chances out of the blue, some guy who knows the prince says, hey, you want to go to Bhutan? This is right after watching Anthony Bourdain's show. So in a few weeks, I'll be there. Huh. We, we treat like royalty and we're staying in one of the royal, royal family homes. You know, I mean, I, Deb, you can't make this stuff up, man. Yeah. You can't. It's amazing when you're a hell yes, what the universe will bring to you. And yeah. I, I love the idea of the constant surprise and deliciousness of it. Yeah. And so I'm curious when people go on these trips to you, yeah. uh, to Peru and so forth, what is that experience? Would you take them to particular places? You okay. have teachings or are they free to travel and roam about the cabin? How does that work? Well, I have a, a um, like an itinerary that's very fluid uh, because people need something. They need to know what are we doing? Where are we going? What hotel are we staying in? Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, the, uh, mo most of my trips are to Peru and, and the Andes have an energy about them that are magical. Mm. I don't have to do anything. Now the, I'm a teacher, so they know that, that I'm teaching, but I, I, I back off and let the mountains and the land speak for itself. Mm. And they, people, some, some do medicine, some do not. They come, they, they have a reason to be there. The, fir the first day I ask them flat out. We're all seekers of something. What are you seeking? Why are you here? This is not a vacation. Why are you here? How did you get here? What did you have to do to get here? And what do you what do you what do you expect to get out of it besides the touristy Machu Picchu? What else what else is here for you? Open your eyes, open your heart, and see what is here for you beyond the experience of going to Machu Picchu, which is why people go there. Right? And so I probably have been to Machu Picchu 30, 40 times. I mean, to me, it's just, you know, I love every time I go. Every time I go, it's magical. Every time. doesn't matter. It's magical. And so I'm so happy to announce, you're, this is the first show I've announced, that I bought my own place now. I have my own center in the, right outside of Pizak, right in the middle of the Sacred Valley. It's so beautiful. Two mountains on each side, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring people to the center, and they won't have to go moving hotels like we did before we used to move hotels all the time they're going to be i call it my home it's it's, it's named after my mother catalina and and i'm so excited that this summer is going to be the first time i bring a group to my home it happens to sleep 50 it's a big house <laughs> you know it's got a conference center and a yoga center and a whole restaurant it's got all this it's like it's four like acres. you own the whole thing or you're yeah. sharing it no, you're no no i own it i own it yeah it's my home so yeah. how are you populating it? How are you getting people in to run the restaurant? Well, how, yeah, you know, well, buy things so it's beautiful yeah. and feels like a place yeah. or a center, yeah. or it's chairs. Gonna, it's, 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 I've got a whole staff. I've got people that work for me. And, and so right now we're like, I got to be honest with you, yesterday, oh, the other day I was at Big Bear and uh, Mountains here in California and I was a towel, I had hung a towel on the door. And so I woke up and I look at the towel and I started freaking out. <gasps> How many towels do I need? <laughs> <laughs> I am freaking out, Debbie. I'm going, <gasps> well, if I do seven times, seven times, seven times, ah, I don't have towels. How do I get? I was freaking out. But, but, that, but I have people there that are, that are like, okay, don't worry. Like the staff that used to run the hotel, it was a hotel before I got it. And so the, all the staff wants to come work for me. So, mm. I said, so they know the place that even, even the guy who takes care of the grounds, who knows how to, like, I, I, I have a house there also. And I said, um, there's not a chimney in my house. He goes, don't worry, I'll build you one. I said, I like this guy. He's, I'll build you one. Don't worry, I'll build you one. These are master trades people, right? Mm. They're, they're beautiful people. And I'm happy to employ people there in the, in the village. It's a village, not a town. It's a village. I mean, you're in the mountains, right? And, um, and I'm so excited about bringing people there to really experience Peru in a different way, you know, and, and, and be on this property between two mountains and every day, you know, one day I'll teach, one day we'll be out running around and, 
So it's going to be a different experience than what it has before because now, and, and, and by the way, I mean, I haven't announced this either, but I'm moving to Peru. Like in, in 90 days, I'll be gone. Like I'm selling everything I own. I don't want I don't, nothing. Even my new car, I'm giving to my 17 year old son. He's like so excited. <laughs> He's like, what are you going to do with your car, dad? I'm like, I'm going to give it to you. What? What? I said, son, I, I didn't get a car when I was in college. I walked. <laughs> well, so many things are happening concurrently for you. I think that's fascinating because at the same time, your son just got accepted to college, which yes. is a really big deal. It is. And at a time when a lot of parents would be dealing with the empty nest, loneliness, and you know, confusion over the shift, you are actually having a life change at the same time as your son. Yes. What is that like? And, and how well, does he feel about you moving to Peru? Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because two years ago, I was on a bus from Cusco, Peru, to Puno to go to Lake Titicaca. It was an eight hour bus ride. I'm, I'm on this bus ride and all of a sudden I start crying, just bawling. And I, I said, he's gonna leave me. Mm. What am I gonna do? What do I do with my life? I've spent my entire 18 years raising him. And, and you know, and, and what am I going to do? He doesn't even go to the movies with me anymore. So it's not, wasn't like, he's it, 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 just not. He, that's not that cool. Right? So I'm like, that's when I started to make that shift. I started to think I need to start living my life. Because a lot of what happens with most people is they wait till they go to college and they have the empty nest thing and they're freaking out because they're like, uh, there's nothing to do. So that's when I started making these shifts and changes and started thinking I need to do something. I need to live my life and I need to show him that I'm willing to live my life. And so, you know, when I told him that I was going to move to Peru, he said, Dan, that's like your home, huh? I said, it is. It is home. And, and you need to fly. And, and then he says, but what do I do if I need you? And I look him in the eyes and I said, look me in the eyes. Why would you call that? What would you really need if you called that? And he starts smiling. I said, I can transfer that on Venmo from where I'm at. <laughs> and he starts laughing. I said, I know, son, I was your age. You're not calling me to say I love you. You're calling me to say I love you. And can I have some money? Right? <laughs> so he's really excited about, about this, you know. And I said, son, I'm doing this for you. Because someday I won't be here anymore. And you're welcome to sell it. And that's your inheritance. That's what I'm doing. I'm building it so that you have something in the future. And, and it's something that, that dad feels so good about. And it feels so good about the people that will come through there and the people that I'm gonna, because the center's gonna help. Uh, I've committed to building a school up in the mountains, a, a, an elementary school for kids. You know, I, I wanna do good work, you know, and that's where, that's, that's where I'm gonna do it from there. And I'll be coming back and forth. I mean, they're gonna kick me out eventually until I get a pat, my, own, my own passport. All ah, right. Yeah, there'll be that to deal with. Yeah, I can't stay there forever. They move on, you know, and then come back. And then, so it's exciting when you step into your power. It's exciting when, when, when we accept the roles that, that life presents to us. Don't you think it's that we accept the roles that we actually came here to play? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and I want to encourage young people to, to think about it earlier. I mean, I, I'm 55, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, it took a long time. But, but I, was a, I was crazy. It took a while to calm me down. <laughs> I'm still crazy, but not as crazy. <laughs> Let's keep it real. <laughs> I keep it real. I mean, as a matter of fact, I was sharing at the place where I was speaking this weekend. I said, you know, I look out at the crowd sometimes and I'm thinking all these people. And I tell them, I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. I am crazy and I love being crazy and I'm okay with that. I said, but you must be crazier than me if you're following me. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's crazy followers. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's a good group to be part of. Right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be speaking about mind fullness. What does that mean to be full of one's mind or mindfulness exclusively for Dare to Dream listeners. I've made a unique deal with Thinkific. Amazing. It's only available to my listeners. Create, market, sell your own online courses. Thinkific's powerful all-in-one platform makes it really easy for you to share your knowledge, grow your audience, and scale the business you already love. And whether you're educating 10 students or 10 million across the world, Thinkific gives you the easiest technology and best support in the business. 
go to thnk.cc slash Deb. And as a Dare to Dream viewer and listener, when you use thnk.cc slash Deb, you're going to get the first three months of Thinkific business plan free, free to set up your online courses. So it's the only way to access that exclusive deal, thnk.cc slash Deb. And if you are just tuning in, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. I've got the amazing Daniel Gutierrez here with me. You can find out more about him at danielgutierrez.com. And uh, it may sound pedestrian, but I'm curious about mindfulness, not so much about what it means out there in the world, because I think we've all been inundated with that. But I really want to know what it means to you and why at this time in your life, it was really important for you to embody that and speak about it and write about it. Right. Well, the, the, the title of my book is Radical Mindfulness. And a lot of people were at first were like, oh, that's crazy. It's never going to fly. And, and that even just gave me more fuel because I go, okay, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging me because I'm not going to stop. Radical mindfulness. Mindfulness, we all know what that is. It's awareness. It's just awareness. And we see it everywhere. You're right. Commercials. Uh, everything is about mindfulness today. Right. And, and, and it's great. I'm glad because it brings awareness to our world. But beyond mindfulness is the practice of mindfulness. Mm. That's what I learned. Is that radical is being able to stay in that space of awareness all day long. Not just when you're doing yoga, not just when you're meditating in the morning, not just when when you've taken a moment all day long now is that possible i don't know i told you earlier i get on a freeway i'm just like you i get upset and next thing you know hands are flying and and i realize okay i probably shouldn't have done that so what can i do to bring myself back to center you know and really mindfulness is really for me it was important because that experience with my mother i could have never had that experience had i not been so present so radically present that I was able to experience that out-of-body experience that I had with her. And, and, and that's why it's important because I realized that all my life, even though I didn't know, somehow I was able to put the blinders on. Where, you know, it's like I tell people, the bills are going to be there no matter what. But if you focus on the bills, you're never going to do what it takes to get the job done so that they're not there. And if you focus on the bills and you go, oh, and you freak out and, and, and you panic, the only thing that's going to be true is you're going to get to the end of the month and nothing's going to get paid. So how can I be so radically mindful in the moment that, that I realize that in this present moment, in this right here, right now, I can create action that creates a better future for me. The next moment's better because I did something different. So it's beyond mindfulness. It's the action behind mindfulness. That's the action behind mindfulness. Mindfulness is awareness. But you know what? A drunk can be aware. It doesn't make him any better. So how do you get beyond that? You, it's the action. It's the action. It's the action that we create in our life. And the only place we can do it is in the present moment. And if you do that, right? And I'm going to share it because this has happened like three, four days ago. Please. My son, my son is, is 17. He's senior. Been in jazz band for four years, five years. Absolutely refused to do a solo. Refused. You may have seen the video on, on Facebook. Refused because he didn't think he was good enough. The other night was his last concert with this band on that stage is his last opportunity. And he says to me, as we're going to, to the concert, I'm tired, dad, because my son's very busy and he's, he's boy scout. He's this, he's that, he does everything. He's a you know, varsity volleyball player. He's, he's, I'm tired, dad. Oh, oh, and he says, Oh, and I'm doing a solo tonight. I said, you are. And he says, but I'm tired, dad. And I said, son, just stay present. You'll be all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brings tears to us. When he got up there to play, Deb, I don't know what happened, but he, he transmuted himself into a, a famous jazz player. I don't even know who it was, but he played the whole play. He rocked the place. The two, and, and the reason why it was so powerful wasn't because he played powerful, because the obstacles that were beside him, just next to him on the video, if you go to my Facebook, the girl who's gone is the girl who dumped him two weeks ago. Uh. And right next to them, right next to him, are two of the best sax players on, like, they're going to school for music. My son's not. So he had to perform above and beyond their performance. Mm. And he killed it. He stayed present. Even those jazz were going, wow. They were so happy for him. And the girl, like, wow. <laughs> 
right? Right? And I showed him the video. He was so happy. I said, look at the video. Right? I showed him the video. And I used this video as an example of what happens when we're so radically present that we have that courage, that 30 seconds of courage that can change your life. 30 seconds, all it takes. Have that courage to change your life. That's what being present does. That's what being radically mindful does. Because in that moment, he had a choice. He could have played okay, and it would have been all right. He could have said no, and it would have been all right. But this was the last moment he had for his senior year. Never again would he ever walk down this path again. Mm -hmm. And he stepped into it. He stepped into it and rocked the freaking place. Everybody went crazy. Did he reflect on it? Did he say what that moment meant to him to be in it? You know, I, I, he, he, I did ask him. And actually, I sent him the video the next day and I said, son, I said, your dad's, your, I'm, not, I, I'm not coming to you as a dad. I'm coming to you as a master teacher. You rocked it. And I want you to keep this video because someday you're going to not feel good enough. And I want you to see how good you are. Use that video, right? And so he reflected back because I don't even think he knew he had it in him. But he was willing to take it, uh, to stay present enough to make that choice. And now, oh, he's got a pep in his step. You know, he's empowered because it was powerful. And we all have that capability. And when we're mindfully present, when we're radically mindfully present, that present that we don't allow the past or the future to govern us, but we stay that present, then the bills and the girlfriend and the other sex players and all this stuff doesn't matter anymore. Then we create magic in our life. And now that, that was, it's funny because I told him, I said, I hope you don't mind, but you just became a teaching point in my, in my presentation because I'm, I, I did that. I played the video without sound. And I said, tell me what, because everyone thought, oh, that's a jazz player. They, they didn't, I didn't play it with sound. I said, just watch his mannerisms. Tell me what's happening. And they're watching, his, you, know, you know, he's getting down. He's just blowing it out. And then I put, played it with music. And I said, he'd never done a solo up until that point. Mm. We were blown away. I said, and that kind of courage exists in all of us. Yeah. If we just stay radically present, radically mindful. So mindfulness is a big deal, like you said. But to be, be that present that I could experience my mom, that he could be that sax player in that moment, we all have that, Deb. And that's what your show's about, is, it, is giving people the courage to be okay with just, you know what, do your thing. Shut up already. Do your thing. <laughs> exactly. I want to know more about your thing. So in the last minutes that we have here, I have some questions about you personally. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Deb would let me off the hook that easy. <laughs> This is, the, uh, this is the PG version. We'll do another version at another time. But the, in the PG version, Daniel, what I'm have you learned you said about, that. right? Yeah. What have you learned about moving forward in your life after a setback? What have setbacks taught you that probably felt really crummy in the moment, but by virtue of going through them to the other side, you receive something that informs you going forward? I have a lot of setbacks. You know, I think anyone who has seen any kind of success in their life has experienced setbacks, but they've taught me, even though in the moment it didn't look like it was a good lesson, you know, you hear that, oh, it's a look for the silver lining, shut up. You know, it's, it doesn't feel good. But looking back, all of them, all of them, all of them taught me something. And if it was only resilience, mm. You know, I was the guy that would say, you know what? Your people say, well, this, you know, I'm in a room full of horse manure. And I'm the guy that was going, well, there's got to be a horse in there and hit somewhere. I didn't get here by itself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find it. <laughs> so, so for me, it's like the setback. Today, I look at setbacks differently because I don't see them as setbacks. I, I, I go through trials and tribulations like everybody else. And, and to me, now it's just about just breathing through it and saying, okay, so it's not that bad. I mean, I, I've been through bad, you know, um, been through times when I didn't think I was going to make it been through times when I, you know, I, I didn't know where I was going to eat or sleep. And, and every single one of those moments has taught me this compassion. It's taught me to have compassion for other human beings. It's taught me that, that, that day when I was sitting in that restaurant full of myself, that that's not life. And, and that, that I had no compassion for others because I got there, you know, on the backs of other people. 
-hmm. And today I, I, I have compassion for people. And, and, and when I see somebody hurting, I don't walk by without stopping. And, 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 and even if I just say it's going to be okay, been there, it's going to be all right. And, and I know you can't see that right now, but just remember that. Right. Just remember that. Someday you'll go, oh, that crazy bald guy that came by and said that was going to be okay. You know? and, and so it's taught me compassion, not, not just for other people, but for myself. That, 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 that life is like the ocean. The ocean is not the ocean without waves, and life is not life without problems. So don't try to avoid them. Don't try to avoid them. They're, gonna, they're just there. And it's not about you. And it's not about me. It's just what is. And if I can navigate my way through those waters and go, okay, so this happened. What can I do with it? My mother passed away. It was devastating. But I wrote a book. And I bought a center with her name on it. Hmm. I did something with it. I didn't just let it be a bad thing that happened in my life. So today, the, the lessons that I learned always are transformed and transmuted into something beautiful or before I just like waddled in my mud. You know, I don't do that anymore. You know what I mean? do you think your true purpose is, Daniel? What do you think your purpose in this life on this earth is? I'll say it this way. I did not come here to heal you. I came here to love you and that love will heal you. It's just love. Deb, it's just love. I wasn't always that way. You know that. I wasn't always that way. I remember the first time I came back to the EBC after being gone, and they were like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> he's bald, and he's wearing Buddha shirts, and, you know, he's quiet. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to love. I, I, I want to love, and I want to love everybody, and I, I don't like everybody, but I love everybody, you know? And, and I think that that's what my whole journey was about, even as a 17-year-old as a minister, even though I didn't know it that it was to get to a place where I really just love. That's all. And that's, my, that's the journey. And love can mean a lot of things and go a lot of directions. But if I stay centered in that, then all is good. And, and I can still be successful and I can still be powerful. But I come from love, not let me see what I can get from you. Dare to dream. Eight years ago, I asked you this question. Whole different answer. Right? So I ask again. What are you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals, Daniel? Well, I'm going to open the center in a few months. And the next one is going to be in Nepal. Mm -hmm. That's my next, that's my next place. That's the next place. I want to have sister because the vortexes of energy are similar in both the Himalayas and in the Andes. And I just feel like it would be great to have a place that people can do both. So they could, they could feel that like, like in the book I talk about, like the first time I ever went to the Himalayas, I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, wow, I feel like I've been here. Well, of course I've been here. Of course I've been here. And so for me, it's just, you know, it's continuing to, you know, to build the center and build another center, right? Maybe write some more books and just be. I don't, I don't know, Deb, you know, there was a time when I used to just be like after one thing after another. Like, well, you know, what, what's next? What's next? And I just want to live. I, I just want to be, I, I just want to be. I don't have a need. I mean, like many of us, I have many accolades. I've been on a cover of many magazines. I've done, I've done it. I don't have any need at all, at all, to say, well, I need or want that. No, I just want to be. I just want to be. And, and then every day, wake up and say, wow, I'm alive. What will I create today from this aliveness? I am alive. What will I create today yeah. from this aliveness. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh my goodness. I've just loved connecting with you in this way too. And I end today's show with this quote from Daniel Gutierrez. Radical mindfulness is not only being aware and present, but being so present that you are monitoring your thoughts on a moment to moment basis and redirecting your actions towards your current intentions, followed by commitment. Next up on Dare to Dream, oh, people, I'm featuring Stephen Kotler. This man changed my life. And even having this conversation today where plant medicine came up as a pivot point, it goes right back to this. Stephen Kotler, who wrote the New York Times bestselling book, Stealing Fire, which, 10, 15 years ago, I read, changed everything. 
when I learned what a lot of C Silicon CEO people were doing <clears throat> to master their lives and actually how deeply spiritual and self-development based they were. And he is also the co-founder and the director of the Flow Genome Project. And his latest book, which I just finished reading, it's a, and this one's a novel, it's incredible, Last Tango in C Cyberspace, already New York Times. You're gonna wanna tune in for this transformation conversation next week. You can subscribe to this channel. You'll see right here on the podcast, there's a way to subscribe and also on youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. So you can see my beautiful, magnificent guests in action and anime and subscribe there too. This will come right in your inbox every week. Thank you for joining us today. And remember the secret of success is having the courage to start your dream in the first place.